All right, we're just about ready to go. Jason Wygat as the gate is down for the 85, 10 to 12 limited. And they are thundering into that first turn. We had a nice story developing in this class. Cannon Hargrove winning the first moto. He took fourth in a moto number two. Caden Dudney second in both motos. He had a shot at both moto wins. Clark Robbins coming out of New Jersey won the second moto. So Robbins, Dudney, Hargrove, those would be your primary contenders as we go into this uh, 10 to 12 limited final moto. Vincent Way with the whole shot. Man, we've seen Vincent up front several Starks times. Had some great. issues. Yes. Tipped over here and there. So let's get Vincent Way through a moto clean. Uh-oh. Yellow flags are out. One rider picking the bike up. Not sure who that was. Oh, seriously, it's 27. Vincent Way again. Just again, as we're talking you about him, him, bro. You I'm not going to say another you word. You another said, word. let's see if we get him through a moto. It took five turns. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. I'll tell you, uh, it's one of the hardest things, I think, for people, even someone like Nick Way, his dad, who's been through all the battles, to not... You, your, your whole career really doesn't hinge on one mistake in one moto. But to not feel that way Here. in the moment when it's happening is very difficult. So we'll try to figure it out. Caden Dudney who is one of our three title contenders, I believe is in the lead. You'll see the orange hand guards on his bike right around the outside there. But Cannon Hargrove, another second. one of the contenders, is up to second. Yeah, we'll see how this, I love these three-way, two-way ties here, man. It puts a lot of pressure on the guy, creates some great racing. Hargrove under the attack around the outside from the number 12, or maybe that's the 72, that's, I believe that's Landon Gibson. Yeah, and Seth Dennis Ooh. on the 93 has had a really rough week. He's in contention right now. He's got that white helmet on the inside of this Bermuda Triangle turn right before the finish. And now headed to the tunnel jump. Look at that battle. Up and over the tunnel jump we go, the white helmet, you said it. No, that is not Seth Dennis. I'm looking at Clark Robbins, Cannon Hargrove. There's the number 40 of Caden Dudney, Clark Robbins and the 62 of Robbins. All right, I'll get it straight here in a second. These are our three contenders. Right up front. And they are one, two, three in this final moto. Oh my goodness, there's one point separating all three of them because of the tie in points. So I believe this will come down to whichever one of these three riders wins the moto, wins the title. And right now it is Caden Dudney on the number 40 out of Athens, Texas with two, two scores leading this moto in control of it. Clark Robbins, Cannon Hargrove. Robbins is second on the racetrack, second overall right now. Hargrove third in the racetrack, third overall. Odd little line there, way outside for Robbins, and here comes Hargrove. Who did the exact opposite. He went inside, shortening up, as we say, the racetrack, and seemed to work. And again, there's that risk-reward. There is a deep rut. It can grab your foot, your peg, or whatever, and pull you down, slow you down. You can cross rut. We saw what happened to Pinkston in that last moto. There's a problem there. There was no rut involved in that for Clark Robbins, and here comes Hargrove. Woo! Oh, wheel to wheel. They almost touch. Hargrove, a big scrub. Get some of that. Is it going to pay off? No, because no. he passes him back. Of course, of course, that's how it works out. Yeah, you pull off a spectacular move, and you actually lose the Still position. Still not good enough. So how about Robbins fighting back, raised in the sand pits of New Jersey, and fighting back against Hargrove. Good battle for second. Yeah. Hargrove out of Kemp, Texas. Got to think he does some uh, riding down there at Underground MX. Got to, got to. So Robbins with that all denim ensemble, her, you know, really? coming from Jersey, he's got the denim pan riding pants, yep. the denim button up, acid uh, wash, of course. And what a great battle that one! It's just not done. They are they have been side by side for the better part of this lap. Here comes Hargrove trying to make something happen around the outside. Got a good head of steam. It is a steam-driven KTM. He went with that option rather than the gas-powered machine. Wow. Still can't make sales and a full head of steam. <laughs> All right. Right in front of the billboards we go, watching that battle for the number two spot. But guess what? All the while, Caden Dundee says, hey, y'all slug it out. Y'all fight for second because I'll take, take care of this gold medal for you. Yeah, Dundee has gotten away. Four-second lead right now over this Robinson-Hargrove battle for second and third. Then it's Landon Gibson, Seth Dennis, fifth. Max Shane, Chance, La Chase Lawton. Brody right, let's Bart, see if those Colby lines. Goff, Nathan Hummel. Kevin, I got it, dude. I got it. <laughs> Stop talking over me, dude. I, I got this. There. Going into the 10 commandments, I was going to talk about these next couple of turns where their lines were so different. 
Whoa, tripling out. All right, there they go, same lines. Exact same lines they did, ran the last time. And he'll go outside here, and you'll just let him pass you. I mean, Hargrove greased right. that inside. This might be enough to make the pass. It's so hard to tell if they've got the pass or not. Because Hargrove could swing around the outside, have a great head of steam. But I think... I think Hargrove yeah, finally, finally has stuck. it. It probably took four corners to complete that pass. All right, he's got to go after Caden Dundee. Careful there. And you see these guys working the bike the whole time. This is their head, their, their hips, trying to find that balance point. About like Rodney Tomlin, about 2 in the morning, using his hips, trying to make his way to the bathroom. <laughs> it is a balance, Kevin. And it's way off. Where's that light switch at? The balance is way off. I'm in a triangular building. This is odd. It is impressive. It's the uh, footwork that they talk about with these kids. You're seeing at a very young age now, Hargrove standing up way deep into the corner to keep the pressure on the pegs. Ride the bike through the pegs, not the seat. You see a, a, a version of that. That's what Eli Tomek always does. He doesn't sit down to the very, very last moment. And you fast forward that 10, 15 years now, and it has become something that everyone does. Trying to ride with the legs. Check those lap times out now as Dudney throws down a 209, a 212 for Hargrove, and he is absolutely checking out. He is seven seconds out front. He just said, I'm going to take control of this. I'm not leaving it in the hands of a finish for you or me or something else happening. And, you know, the, the goal in these classes, of course, is to get noticed, make a name for yourself, get more support. You go out there and win the moto big time. That's going to help your case. This is about the time we really start paying attention to guys, you know, that second or so year in the 85 class are kind yeah. of figuring out you're kind of establishing yourself as a guy. Dudney has done that for the last couple of years now on the 65 and now he's doing it again here in the 85 class. So kudos to Caden Dudney. It's on the Altus Motorsports KTM. A big mistake from Hargrove, by the way, before these Ten Commandments. We got another battle that we're watching here. Just right underneath them. Man, that's so much quicker. You, yeah, you got to take that line. line. That is the number 72, perhaps? Okay, I was wondering, I'm like, what bike is that? It is a KTM with a little bit of blue on it. The 72 of Landon Gibson. Yep, you can see now from the side, the, the, the shape of the plastic that that is a KTM. Yeah, Clark Robbins better get it figured out. That's the same area that he's still going wide and Gibson knows the inside lines quicker. So you might see a pass coming up next go around. There is 17 of Hargrove. There's some flaggers not really interested in what's going on over there. They've got their section of patrol. Don't want to turn. Got left forward, not, not, or sorry, backwards on the track actually. Good point. So Gibson is on the hunt. Landon Gibson on that 72 machine. The splash of blue there throwing you off looks like perhaps a TM, but we know it's not. There is the 15 of Chase Lawton and little Seth Dennis right there in tow. Lil Ripper, don't Lil say the Ripper, T. Yeah. Lil. Lil. No T's. Like Myron Short would say, Lil. Uh, Lil. Lil Ripper. <laughs> Dennis trying to set up a pass here to get into fifth, battling it out with Lawton. Oh, got dark here all of a sudden. Wow. Wow, a night race here at Loretta's. <laughs> it's like it's eight o'clock at night. And the sun's back. A fight back there by the billboards for sure as they head into the mechanics area. Gibson and the rest of the gang have rolled up onto Cannon Hargrove in the number two spot. Clark Robbins slips all the way back to fifth, Jason White. Oh, Wagon. boy. Yeah, so Hargrove on the 17 is under pressure, but now it's from the 72 of Gibson and the 15 of Lawton. And Clark Robbins, who had a chance at this title, must have made a mistake. He's lost a bunch of spots. Meanwhile, Caden Dudney has it under control. All right, we've seen the majority of the passes coming right here, and you know this man right here in the number that you see behind us is, oh, he just makes it look easy. Gibson does it again. He's done that three laps in a row. Sealing the deal. Landon Gibson, what a comeback up to the number two spot. He made up two seconds in those two straightaways. Six, three scores for the rider out at Peachtree City, Georgia, coming into this one. So Gibson just out of contention for the title. But a great final moto here, getting around Hargrove. 
can't believe he's not on a Kawasaki. That's Doug Duchette territory. He lives down there. Doug would tune on your bikes every day of the week for free, no problem. After work, How no big deal. How many roads do you have that are peach tree, peach this? Well, I mean, it's the peach tree capital. I mean, it's unbelievable. Like, yeah. Can you well, come up peach tree city is a city south, south of Atlanta. Then you have peach tree you road have all over Atlanta. Peach tree cities. No, just one, just the one that I'm aware of. It's all peach tree city, the entire thing. <laughs> Peace Tree City, Georgia. You ain't nothing if you have a street in Atlanta. Your address is not. Yeah. Doesn't have the word peach in it. That's, that's, that's fair. So now we're following along with Landon Gibson as he has jumped into the number two spot, pushes Cannon Hargrove right out of the way. Does he have the goods to go after Kay Dunny? I mean, the lap times say yes. He turned to 210 in traffic, as did Chase Lawton the lap before, matching your leader's time. Yeah, but look at Hargrove. Hargrove is coming back you figure after. It out. Just go faster. Yeah, just go faster. He got caught. He got passed. Now he's almost ready to repass Gibson for second. All right, let's see if he's gone to school and can follow some of those la or those lines. Here they come. Oh, look at that. I'll take your inside line. Great battle here for the number two spot. Caden Dunney, 10 seconds out front. Well, we'll just enjoy this one, though. Gibson, Hargrove, Lawton on the 15, and coming into the picture, Brady Barth on the 26 KTM. More guys. Just keeps getting better. Come on. Everybody's invited. Big tent philosophy here. This thing pumping out the air here right on my back. Ah, Hargrove almost gives up another pass with that line choice again. He goes inside here, though. Smart move. Keeps the number 15 of Chase Lawton behind him. Let's look at the top 10 in the number 10 spot. It would be Colby Goff. Nathan Hummel is ninth. Seth Dennis back to the number 8 spot. 7th spot is Max Shane. Clark Robbins is 6th. And here's your top 5. Brody Barth, Chase Lawton, Cannon Hargrove, Landon Gibson, and Caden Dudney. And it looks like the 72 of Gibson starting to get away as the 15 of Chase Lawton starting to slug it out with Cannon Hargrove now. There's a good look around the big beach there. A very popular spot to watch the races from. And look out around the outside. Oh, feet off the pegs. Chase Lawton, he doesn't care where you're at in the points. He wants to do better. A 5, 8, and a 4 is what he's got cooking right now. Pretty consistent finishes, though, for Caden Dubney. He's been right around that number one, number two spot. Two, two, one scores. That's how you can win a championship here. And I've got to wonder that uh, maybe that first moto might have been a come-from-behind effort. You know, you got the bad gate pick sometimes. When he needed Dubney to deliver, he has done it. 100% correct there. Seven more minutes to go. Moto number three for these guys. It says moto number two on the screen. It's their third moto. Right past the mechanics area. He could have high five, gotten a drink of water or Gatorade. He was so close to that mechanics area. Caden Dudney, or excuse me, the 72 of Landon Gibson. Gibson matches your leader's lap time again, a 209, but he's just got so much time to make up. He's got 10 seconds to make up. Oh, Hargrove fighting that KTM as he comes out of the left-hander. He's about to fight two other riders. Lawton and Barth has entered the chat. Barth on that black KTM with the black gear. Whoa, and that'll do it. Lawson will get, or Lawton will get around Hargrove. Still amazed by these kids when they go in these ruts, never taking their feet off the pegs. My first instinct is to take everything off that's, the bike, and I just the let thing go. That's advanced it has. The most that's to me as of change. Um, you know, scrubbing was definitely the thing. Maybe a, a decade ago, that really became, you know, you have to do it. Uh, you don't see it quite as much in this class. Uh, on the 85s, it's not like they are they have so much extra power they're going to overjump if they don't scrub, but the, the footwork, the leg work, whatever you want to call it, the balance in those ruts, it is advanced at such a high level at the pros and also all the way down here to a 10 to 12 class. Yellow flags out in this yellow section. Yellow flags. Yeah, yeah, we're trying to figure out what happened. There's a 72 of K, or excuse me, Landon Gibson. There's a KTM cranking, trying to start a very clean KTM. Oh boy! But we'll I'm see seeing in a minute if Caden Dudney is coming he's here. by. Caden Dudney is right in front of us. All right, so he's good to go. I can confirm that. 
parents can, I'll just shut up. They're like, please stop talking. They probably prefer us not actually talk about the riders at all because you have know, the announcer's like curse. Poor Way, who uh, remember had the whole shot? <laughs> yeah. Let's and just get him through a moto. And Boop. he goes down instantly. Stop. All right, there's Landon Gibson trying to make something happen here. Whatever you do, I'm going to do. They all turn two tens. Dudney, Gibson, and Lawton all card a 210, as did Brody Barth in the number five spot. So a good run by Gibson through traffic to get to this number two spot, but Caden Dudney looking to put the finishing touches on a championship coming out of Athens, Texas on the Altus Motorsports Fly Racing KTM. Man, it does not take long for this track to get rough. What are we, five motos into the day? Well, I showed you the photo where earlier they were ripping the track Three feet deep, literally. <laughs> 33 inches. Yep. Yeah. To try to reclaim some of the soil. They really had some damage last year. The second pro motocross national that we had at this track, we had just uh. unbelievable rain and mud. And kind of the worst case scenario because, you know, you can seal a track, but it started raining, uh, I think, as the bikes were on the line for one of the practice sessions, it just dumped. So the track had been prepped. It had been opened up. They still went out there and rode. It's sponge then. Yeah, so it soaked up everything. And then the rest of the day at this second pro motocross round here last year was spent basically pushing all that mud off the track. That billboard turn, I swear the mud was piled up as high as the roof of that billboard turn around Jeez. the outside of that corner. It was unbelievable how much mud they pushed off. So they've spent most of this week talking to Jeff Russell and uh, Randy Poulter and the track crew. They're just trying to get all that good soil back. Push it back on there. And uh, mix it back in with the clay. Did it finally dry out from last year? Like they just had it dry yeah, it out from a year ago. Yeah, they had hair dryers. <laughs> they had the NASCAR jet dryers out there. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it rained so badly last year at that uh, race, which was about three weeks after we were here for the amateur one. And uh, they're getting the track back into shape. But that's that's a lot of damage. You might think, well, yeah, they've had a year to fix it. But once you get all that good dirt that you brought in, mixed in with the clay, you Here's can't pull it back out. Good dirt. Yeah. You can't re-separate them. Yeah, they spend so much time amending the soil, and in those days, I've seen I've seen them when they pushed it off here. Yeah, it's nothing like what you're talking about. We push a little bit, and then they can go get it, throw it right, right back on the racetrack. But yeah, they were in such a disastrous mode. They had to get it down, get down to something hard where they could race on. They didn't yeah. care about the dirt after that point. Yep, going forward, so it'll take maybe a year or two to adding stuff to it, putting it all back. And you remember we've had floods here where when the floods come in and fill, it oh, takes everything. It. Every yep. bit of this soft topsoil is gone. And also, uh, Jeff Russell thinks there's two changes to the track design, and he thinks there's two corners where the guys are entering a little bit faster than they used to. And that's adding to that kind of skatey feel with the front end. Uh, you had those S-turns after the Ten Commandments, so you weren't really yeah. generating any speed. Now, after the Ten Commandments, it's a bit of a straightaway. So we're watching right now on the screen. This corner right here, you're entering with a little more speed than you did before. And then Storyland, you'll have more speed because this is now a longer straightaway without the chicane before it. So that's changing the feel of the track a little bit too. Time's just about out. We're gonna head down. Caden Dudney trying to finish this one off on the number 40 and win this national title in 10 to 11, or sorry, 10 to 12 limited. Yeah, we've seen uh, the last two motos were ties. Guys had to do what they had to do. Caden Dudney has done it. Our winner in the C-Class did the same thing. You gotta win that last moto. They're all tied up in points. And Cade Dudney on his way to delivering a championship back home to Athens, Texas. They are dancing in the streets. Everybody back home cutting up pieces of paper for the big ticker tape parade, the confetti that will fly when he lands in his private jet right there on Main Street. Cade Dudney. Two, two, and one moto scores. Saving his best for last, no doubt. into that left-hander right here before the announcer's tower. There's Kay Dunn. He got the orange hand guards on his little orange brigade KTM. And that is going to do it. Kay Dunn will actually beat Jason Wygant to the podium as well.
All right, the rest of the gang coming through here in the 85, 10 to 12, their third moto. It's going to be Cade Dudney. He does the job. 11-second lead over Landon Gibson, Chase Lawton third, Brody Barth fourth, Max Shane fifth, Brandon Harrison sixth. And Landon Gibson lands in the number two spot overall. How about that for that hard work? Landon Gibson is rewarded with a 6-3-2 score, good enough for second place overall. Unbelievable ride for Landon, but there he is. Look at that happy young man, the number 40 of Caden Dunney, getting the high fives from everybody. Well, this is it, but it's all about right here, a third moto showdown and doing it in the clutch when you needed to. Here it is, a moto win unlocks the 10 to 12 limited championship for Caden Dudney. Come on back here, Caden. We'll check out the motorcycle and all of the logos that you got piled up there. Uh, I've been asking everybody this. What was the pressure like coming into this moto? You really had to get the win. Um, there was a lot of pressure. Um, I just tried to stay calm. How'd the moto go for you? Um, I got off to a pretty good start. Um, I worked my way up there at first, um, passed a couple people. Um, not work. I just, I don't know. Awesome. What's it feel like now? Happy. Yeah. You bet. Who do you want to thank, Caden? My mom, my dad, all just more sports, fly racing, Lynx, um, Dunlop, Pro Taper, um, everyone else I forgot. Thank you. All right. Let's hear it for him. Caden Dudney. Let's bring Tad DeWalt from the American Motorcyclist Association to the stage. He will hand over the number one plate. And with that, a champion is crowned. Caden Dudney, everybody. All right, we send our congrats to the Dudney crew, and we'll bring second and third place finishers on up, and then Caden can come back to the stage and shake some champagne. Uh, let's bring up Landon Gibson, who ended up at the number two spot, and uh, Chase Lawton, a good ride, to finish up in third as well. Let's hear it for Landon Gibson. That was a good hard charge there. How was that moto? You know, it was good. I got off to a, I know, okay, start about six or seventh. I had to make a couple passes, and uh, I just, I didn't get going until about midway. I should have charged harder in the first part, but uh, that's what we know what we got to work on. So we're coming back for the next round. That's right. That's good stuff. We'll let you thank some people here. I'd like to thank Jesus Christ for keeping me safe. My mom, my dad, answer. Moto X, Compound, 100% uh, Bell, Pro Taper, um, Pro Circuit for the bikes, they're amazing, Dunlop, Roostam X, and everybody else who I forgot to thank, thank you. There it is, Landon Gibson, silver medalist. Great job, Landon, and a good come from behind charge here to net the bronze. Let's hear it for Chase Lawton. Good job, Chase. Tell me about that. You had like a five-rider battle going there. Uh, yeah, I didn't get too great off the start. Um, I had a little bit of a wheelie, and then I was kind of like mid-pack, and I just had to fight my way through. I was trying to like get on Landon's retire, and just we're moving through the pack. Cool. What do you think of third? That pretty good? Yeah. Who do you want to thank? Uh, I'd like to thank my mom, my dad, my sister, everyone back home supporting me, Lynx, PR2, 100%, 7MX, Motorsports Nation, Slick Products, MX Tire, and everyone else who supports me. Thank you so much. There it is, third place, Chase Lawton. Uh, Vincent Way got the whole shot, but then went down after the Ten Commandments in the first lap. Not sure if he's around. We'll give him a Stasic whole shot award if he wants. Uh, we'll give him the, the award for certain, but if he wants to come on stage, we'll let him do that. And the only other order of business for this 10 to 12 class would be a champagne celebration. So if Caden Dudney wants to come back up and celebrate, here we go. Let's get our whole shot ward up. Let's hear it for Vincent Way with your Stasic Whole Shot Award. Well, starts are dialed this week. Yeah, I got off to a good start, and in the corner of the Ten Commandments, I made a little bobble, and Dundee was right there, and, I, and he, we hit, and then I went down, and so I was struggling to get past some kids in the, in the back. They kept falling in front of me, and then I think I was like 15th or 16th, and then uh, that's what I got. Who do you want to thank? Um, Arma, Answer, Husqvarna, Pro Circuit, um, Scott, Bell, and 
everybody else, thanks so much. All right, thanks for coming back up here too. Let's hear it for Vincent Way with your Stasic Whole Shot Award.